Okay, everybody, here it sits, ready for the second run of getting this transmission off. So let's go ahead and always take off this reverse sensor because as soon as you slide it off, it will see how it's already broke. It will snap as soon as it runs into that. Yeah, this was given to me by a buddy, so I'm very fortunate for that. This has saved me in the, with the engine swap itself and taking out the transmission to change the clutch and the throttle bearing before and all the other issues I've had with it. Um, I was going to go buy a transmission jack today. I just wasn't in the budget for me to spend a hundred bucks to get a transmission jack. I already didn't want to spend the money for doing this initially. So I'll just do it the way I usually do it. It saves money and... And it's never given me a problem before. Clear plenty of room underneath there and put your legs on. What I always do is I scribe a line, a little crow's foot, so when I'm sliding it in, I know where to put the pin in. I don't have to fight with it. Makes it a lot easier. And you get it up, get it up, get it up. What I like using it is uh, as much length as I can. It's half a ton. The transmission for this little thing does not uh, weigh over <laughs> nowhere near a thousand pounds. So putting it out there to get myself the most leverage is the easiest. That way the legs don't have to go it's way underneath there. Um, just makes it a lot easier to pivot it. Bring the hook right over this uh the shift linkage rod and i use a chain and i'm able to do it very easily like i said done this plenty of times haven't had any problems if anything goes wrong i have like two more of these uh shift linkage brackets so if it bends or goes wacky just change it out no big deal It's on there. No problems. Move all these. Whoa. Oh, that's no bueno. I'll tell on myself. Check this out, guys. Tripping. When I, I put these motor mounts on. Wow. Probably shouldn't even put this, include this in here. That's crazy. I have my wire got pinched. Look at that. The wire got pinched between. Oh my goodness. Shame on me. Shame. Bugging. Here at GPE, we are honest. If I did a goof move, that's just stupid. Wow, that could have rubbed and grounded it. Oh boy, caught it. Anyway, on. So you got to go over your car three and four times. Wow. That's the dumbest thing I think I've ever done. Next to getting a DSM, right? But dumps. <laughs> Live and learn. So I'll take off these uh, weather grommets. Keep the moisture exposed to the bolts for the motor mount. The other side. Now the stock motor mount bolts into the plate with uh, it threads right into it. This aftermarket uh, had a plate and then. The bolts went through then i had that's why i had to put the nuts on that side so these are 14 i think yeah, 14 with an extension it's 14 it's 12. see i went against my own judgment tried to get that one up there and wound up dropping it down there so this is where the magnet really comes into play. Like, just get out. Turkey. Get. There we go. Let's use the magnet. They're stuck in there, so I had to use an extension to kind of thread them out. Then I pulled it out a little too much, and, and it falls out anyway. See? Whatever. Get the magnet.
get them right out. There you go. Now one more to go. Three out, one more to go. And I have the weight of the transmission and that side of the motor all hoisted up, so I'm not worried about taking off this mount. Dang it. Ugh. Ugh. Every time I try to get the suction cup to stick to the hood, it falls off. Really? I'm just going to see it on. Really? Wow. clear the flywheel Ooh. now let's see what the what the damage is come on come on you guy come on there we go throw bearing shot it was good. you just hear it squealing so look at this let's see thought it'd be in a few pieces I just want to make sure that my that the shaft isn't marred or anything like that. Oh. Okay. There. Take that off. Oh boy. It's not scarred. Dirty. Still slick. Still looks like it's in decent condition, but it was just chattering everywhere, so I gotta change it. Okay, let's clean out all the dust. All the grime and the clutch dust. <sighs> just blow it out. The air compressor. A second. Not really that bad, really. I mean, before, geez, when before I got it rebuilt, it was terrible. Remember, everybody, I barely had any miles on this thing, so after the rebuild, it's still good. Just that throw bearing burnt out, just annoying. I have to go through so much over a stupid clutch. Where's the other one? Is the dowel in the... Yes, okay, the dowel is still, the dowel's still in there. I make sure I don't lose those. Do not lose the transmission dowels. So anyway. Yeah, not too bad. Clean it out. Everything's looking pretty good. Well, that was quick. Now I'm trying to decide if... See, I have the clutch... I have the clutch pivot ball shimmed with a, I don't know if you guys can see that or not, with a washer between there so it gives the fulcrum just a little bit more leverage. And I'm trying to decide if I want to keep that on there or not. Hmm, to shim or to not to shim. Okay, this is the old throw out bearing and it's kind of interesting. I was looking at it and wondering if you can see that the gap between the rolling bearing in the housing has a little difference and the, the gap is larger down here than it is up here you guys can tell right like look right here and then up there 
and that's not just the angle it's actually it has a lower tolerance between the two spots thought maybe that might have been the problem but I open up the brand new one brand new out the package it has the same the same deal it's off a little bit so I'm not really about to put too much uh, worry into it but this one spins good this one has feels like it's a little bit more resistant than this one this one spins a little easier but there's no way to replicate the bad bearing I mean you have to spin this thing at 700 rpms to replicate it and then put the pressure on it too so just go ahead and uh, put it in there so I use Valvani Valvoline uh, it's a bearing wheel bearing so if it can handle a wheel bearing it can handle a throw out bearing um, by the way this uh, clutch fork is not the stock one this is the stock one this is a chrome ollie one so it's a little more stout in some areas so it's I just know it won't bend I read some articles where the clutch fork could uh, bend break or whatever never happened to me but I changed this out some time ago um, just get you a gob of it and put a little bit a little bit goes all the way around it so you don't have no grit no grit no mar there's no marring on this shaft whatsoever so I don't have to file no spots down make sure there's no grooves or anything dirt debris on it that could catch and snag and create a problem because the inside of the bearing the OEM bearing is plastic so if you have anything there it'll just skate around on it and scar it all up just a little bit there and then there looks like looks like jam wipe your hands off grease the inside of it you know, I gotta put a whole lot but this grease is pretty thick it's not gonna sling anywhere but it shouldn't a little bit I don't want to make sure there's no excessive amount of it though I don't have a camera mount here or a cameraman whatsoever, so I had to do this with one hand. That's too much. Yeah, just get the surface of it. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. There we go. Right there. And you get your Jesus clip, is what it's called. And I usually always order a brand new one. I have two more in the garage, but this has no miles on it. This thing is still brand new and shiny, so I'm just going to reuse it. There. And put it down there. Get in there. There we go. There, and then there. There it goes. And you move it. See? And it looks good. Spinny, spinny. No problems. Get that out. Yep. That looks good. And this can just cast her by itself. And that just spins on its own. This stays still. Hmm. Hmm. It's a neutral. Okay, put your cap back on. Good.